What is up, Jamals? Wild Pikachu 56 here, and this is going to be the first part of my complete history of Five Nights at Freddy's series. We're going to be spanning every game and book leading up to Security Breach. And, uh, this is episode one. So, uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and like the video if you enjoy it, that is. Anyway, let's get into things. So, you're watching PlayStation Direct, and you're getting through the games that are being showcased. You're like, okay, this is getting kind of cool. And then, the last one is Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. But, what exactly is Five Nights at Freddy's, you may be asking? A lot of people are new to the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom, so that is why I made this video. Also, because I know that people are going to actually watch it, because it's FNAF. So, you Google it, it's a game about haunted animatronics that come to life at night, and it's your job to watch them. You're the night guard. Okay, but what exactly is Five Nights at Freddy's? And I think we'll have to go straight to the roots of this mess in order to understand it. It begins with the Chad of Chads, Scott Cawthon. This, uh... This little model I have here is one of my microfigs. I'm going to be using them to, uh, describe, um, FNAF in these videos. This will become more apparent in episode 5, where I talk about FNAF World, the weird one. Anyway, so, Scott Cawthon started out, he, he loved to make games, and his dream was to make a game that the general public would be in love with, and they would love the game, and yeah, but, um, that didn't really work. So he was working as a dollar store general clerk at, in the day, and when he, when his shift was over, he would go home and program little games, and in the beginning, they were religious games. He tried to aim it at Christianity, he wanted to spread the love of God. Which is fine, but the games were poorly received, and, um, hmm. He, uh, he didn't give up. He didn't give up at all, which was amazing. And, um, one day, he made a game called Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. I do not have any microfigs for that, so you're just gonna have to look it up. And, um, the reviews were just awful. They said that this game should not be for kids. It looks like oh, they're demonic animatronics. Heh, <laughs> that rhymed. And so Scott was like, huh, demonic animatronics, you say? I think we all know where this is going, right? So a couple days later, he was asleep, and he had a nightmare. He had a nightmare, and in the nightmare, he was being haunted by... A robotic purple rabbit. Oh, and he described it as the most horrifying thing that he could ever conceive. So, he woke up from this nightmare. And he was like, I think I know what I'm going to do today. So he got to work on his next game. A game with haunted animatronics, including the purple bunny... A bear, a chicken, yeah, excuse me, some of these don't stand up very well, a chicken, and a fox, <clears throat> fox, sorry, and he titled the game Five Nights at Freddy's, we have Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie the Bunny, Chica the Chicken, and Foxy the Pirate, he he wanted to make a horror game. He wanted to um, take a different, take a different um, perspective on what game he was going to make. He made it a horror game where you play as a night guard. You play as a night guard who has to watch the cameras at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and the animatronics um, they uh, they're gonna come to get you, and you gotta close doors and make sure that they don't. And he released the trailer for this game, and it got a lot of attention. And, um, people think that this was because, um, well, I think it's because that 
it was a lot similar to Chuck E. Cheese, and, like, at, f at first glance, they seem very friendly, but then the more you look, you get very, very creeped out, which is what Scott intended in this game. He wanted it to be like that. And the game dropped. It was amazing. The community just loved it. Markiplier, PewDiePie, everyone. Oh, it was just amazing. I was there, all right? I was part of it. And Scott, oh, he was just so happy. He was so happy that people loved this game. But, um, Scott did something else as well. He decided to put in little secrets and Easter eggs into his game so that people could find hidden secrets and piece together what was really going on. So, apparently... In this, um, in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, five children mysteriously went missing. And, um, yeah, there's newspaper articles and stuff that explain that. There's also some other characters as well. There is a an endoskeleton in one of the rooms that just kind of sits there. He doesn't really do much. There's an easter egg where he glances up at the camera, but that's really it. Also, each night, you get a phone call by the phone guy. And he basically just says some stuff, nothing too important, but he does mention a certain thing called the Bite of 87, which kind of builds out the universe and lore, and it, oh, people loved it. People loved it. They just absolutely loved it. Not only that... There was a mysterious Golden Freddy that in the files was titled Yellow Bear. Markiplier called him Golden Freddy in the title, so I think that's how the name was given to him. So, um, there were five children mysteriously went missing, and uh, really there were only five animatronics. Bonnie, Freddy, uh, Foxy, Chica and Golden Freddy, so they think that the children were hidden in the suits and uh, were killed. And there are certain clues that lead us to this, like they kind of moan with raspy breaths and stuff. Yeah, it was it was really interesting. It was, and it was fun. It was a new horror game. It was different, and a lot of people loved it. Now, uh, the phone guy knows that they walk around at night, but, um, his explanation is that they don't have the proper night mode, and, um, they think that at night, if they see a person, they look like an endoskeleton, and they'll try to stuff you into a suit. But the thing is that in the room where the endoskeleton is, Bonnie will occasionally show up in there, and he doesn't even look at the thing. Like, he just... Stares at the camera while the endoskeleton just sits there on the desk. That is pretty much Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, the first game. But, um, Scott, uh, decided that he was going to make some more. He wanted to make another one because the community loved it so much, he decided to make another game, he wanted to expand the lore some more. He wanted to make it a little more cryptic than this one. This one, by far, has, like, the least amount of lore in the entire franchise so far. That's saying something, because there is a lot of lore in this game. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, that'll be it for Five Nights at- The Complete History of Five Nights at Freddy's Part 1. Um, yeah. This is, uh, I think this series is going to be pretty good. Uh, I'm going to enjoy making them, and hopefully you are going to enjoy watching them. Um, it'll get a lot more intricate as I go on, because I'm going to try to connect, um, the, uh, series, like the games, as I go on. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!